amazing, amazing place. It's a pretty chilly morning out here. My watch says 35 Fahrenheit. I would argue that it's a little colder than that. Such a stunning place to come fly. It's our uh, last day here in Monument Valley. Everybody else is kind of going their separate ways and going home. Miles and I have just begun our trip. From here, instead of heading southeast back to Texas, we are actually heading north further into Utah. Miles and I are preparing his Stoll Cherokee 180 for a trip to the American High West. On the way, we're stopping in Sedona, Arizona for the night, then continuing on to Monument Valley, Utah, to meet up with Jason Miller from the Finer Points. He's putting on a Canyons of the Southwest weekend course, and I'm attending as Miles' instructor. The objective of day one of this trip is to get to Northern Arizona and call it a night in Sedona. Then the following day, we rendezvous with the Finer Points group and head into the private strip at Monument Valley. In part one of this American High West series, Miles and I ran drills on short approaches, spot landings and emergency procedures. Welcome to part two. Take me where your river flows. I want to drive on your open road like the wilderness where we are born singing whoa. After a stop in West Texas, it was on to Safford, Arizona for some cheap gas. Two of the mechanics in the maintenance shop there approached us and said they were huge fans of the channel and they were gracious enough to show us around. In the back of their shop, still in service, is the aero commander that Bob Hoover did his famous iced tea pouring roll in. The half part of the airplane filled with the generals and he said, uh, Bob, can the airplane be rolled? And I said, yes, sir. And I rolled and the generals were all having a cup of coffee and none of them spilled a drop. And then I got so bold as to think that maybe I could even pour iced tea. So then we put it on film. Now the difficult thing to think about is try to pour backhanded to see it on, on camera. Believe it or not, you can see the horizon going around as the tea is poured into the glass. This is one of the many reasons I love stopping at random small town airports. You meet wonderful people and you never know what's hanging out behind the hangar doors. That was a really cool surprise. We're onward to our final destination for the day, Sedona, Arizona, nicknamed the USS Sedona because of the airport being located on top of a mesa in the middle of the valley. And lots of pilots compare the visual of landing at Sedona to being on final approach to an aircraft carrier. That is a pretty whipping wind. When Arnaldo and I came in here about a year ago, it was not nearly this windy. It was almost wind calm, but the wind is actually coming straight out of that direction. It's gusty and it's actually pretty cold. Like what I'm, I'm wearing a, a quarter zip and uh, it's, it's not enough. So we're gonna unpack the airplane. I'm not gonna talk to the camera for too long, but there goes a tour helicopter. Welcome to Sedona. The following morning contained breakfast, then an Uber back to the Sedona airport. We met up with Jason Miller and the rest of the group we'll be spending the weekend with at the FBO, then we all departed toward Monument Valley to kick this Canyons of the Southwest course off. Everybody's getting in their airplanes, there's a Skylane saddling up back there, and in the Cherokee, right back here, we're all packed up and ready to go. It seems like a really great group of people. This is going to be a super fun general aviation thing, and we're going to learn a lot. It's going to be cool, right? It's going to be wild. We'll see how the flight goes on the way up there. I heard it's incredibly scenic and we'll just we'll kind of see how it goes from there. So we don't have we don't have much time to sit here and talk to the camera. Everybody's firing up and we don't want to be the last ones out of here. Uh, so everybody's not waiting on us. So we're going to get in the airplane, fire it up, depart Sedona and head up toward Monument Valley. Miles and I will eventually end up in Salt Lake City where I'll begin dumping all of the footage from the first four days of the trip onto the hard drives, and that is where I noticed a huge problem. All of the intercom audio recording for the first four days of flying was blank. The recordings were there, but there was no audio waves being pumped into the recorder. Just silence the whole time. Effectively, what happened is one of the cables going to the audio recorder had a discontinuity in the ground line inside the cable, and both the left and right audio channels didn't make it to the recorder. So that's why we're glazing over the flight footage here, everything from flying around the valley, over Lake Powell, the Grand Canyon, and in and out of Monument Valley. None of that intercom audio ever made it into the recorder. On this trip, we do come back down through here and revisit Page, the Grand Canyon, and a strip that we have seen in a previous series, but that will be seen later on in this series. 
The problem was still there when flying around Moab and Arches National Park, but we miraculously have all of the audio flying into the Salt Lake City Bravo Airport. I must have bumped the cable with my leg or something, and we got lucky and it worked. But it only worked on that one flight. After that, I bought another set of cables and another audio recorder, and we started running two separate audio recorders to make sure this never happens again. Jason recommended all the instructors do the first landing in Monument Valley so we know what it's like when we're talking the pilots through it. Monument Valley itself is this absolutely beautiful, scenic valley with these huge spires of rock sticking up out of the desert floor. You've undoubtedly seen footage and images of this entire area in just about every western film you've ever seen. A man whose unconquerable will and boundless determination carved a lusty, rough, and boisterous slice of history called The Searchers. From the time of Alexander the Great, no man could travel faster than the horse that carried him. Not anymore. I actually walked the entire length of the runway one of the nights that we were there and measured the altimeter at both ends, did some trig, and the runway slopes nearly three degrees down toward the desert. Added with the cliffs on one side, and this is definitely a one-way-in, one-way-out runway, especially in a Cherokee. What do you think? Can't beat it, man. Can't beat it. I did that first landing. That was Jason's recommendation to have the CFIs do the first landing, so if we're instructing, on the landing, we kind of know what we're talking about. It's definitely kind of interesting coming in here. Uh, I had a tailwind, like right there on short final, and I had to really juice the power because it's one of those phenomenons where you're going a lot faster over the ground, so it makes you think that your airspeed's fast. It was just kind of weird. It was, it was, it's very weird. You're, definitely, definitely got to stay on the throttle. Right. Your, your airspeed's a lot slower than you think it is. Even though it feels like you're going fast, your, your airspeed may not be that fast, so you got to watch your airspeed with the tailwind like that. And the runway's right here. goes toward the terrain right there, and it slopes down this direction. So it's basically, for our purposes in, in the Cherokee, it's a one way in, one way out. We're not taking off toward the mountain. There's a definite slope to the runway um, toward, it's going up toward the terrain. So take off downhill. You want everything, of, you everything want, in your favor. Everything in your favor, and that's right, that's right. So welcome to Monument Valley. We're on a time crunch, lunch is, well, now. <laughs> And uh, we're gonna walk over to the lodge and catch lunch with everybody. I'm gonna try to cover it as best as I can, but I don't like having my face in a camera the whole time. <laughs> but welcome to Monument Valley, Utah. Absolutely beautiful place. If you hold your fist at arm's length, it is about 10 degrees wide. Or if you hold it like this, it is 10 degrees from top to bottom. 10 degrees is about a seven to one glide slopes, glide, at, glide ratio. So if it gets quiet, put your thumb on the horizon and if you can see something below your hand, you've got a pretty good chance of making it. Another thing about looking for a place to land, there are some on that side of the airplane too. A lot of people, they'll look out ahead, they'll fixate out to the left. There might be a much better place where they could land on the other side of the airplane. This place is absolutely awesome. It's actually chilly enough. I need a jacket. I'm gonna go put my jacket on a bit. It's cool enough for the felt hat. But uh, we just had a, a couple of really good talks from Jason and Peter. A couple of absolutely awesome seasoned CFIs. I learned so much. Everybody there learned so much. It's just awesome to get a bunch of aviators together in one spot and talk about these topics that we normally don't talk about. And hearing accounts of, you know, pranging an airplane from somebody who's actually done it. Really, really interesting stuff here. Jason is an awesome aviation ambassador. Go check out his YouTube channel, The Finer Points. He does Instagram stuff, lots of training videos on YouTube. Go check him out. And you can also go sign up on his website for these trips like this. He does one out on Orcas Island. He does a mountain trip where you actually get to camp. And then this is the canyons trip. Everybody here are true aviators that want to learn. And that's the whole point of this thing. We don't come out here to like show off our skills or anything like that. No, that's absolutely not what this is about. We're here to learn. We're here to learn new, new things, things that we've never thought about and ultimately make ourselves better pilots and have an absolute blast while doing it. And we're off to a good start. The sun's going down, it's cooling off. Dinner is in just a little while. It, this place is just so beautiful. Monument Valley, Utah. What an amazing place to land.
That concludes day one of the Finer Points Canyons of the Southwest weekend. We all had a great dinner at the lodge and called it a night. The following day was devoted to everyone flying with their instructors and pretty much going their separate ways. Then more seminars back at Monument Valley afterward, followed by a big cookout back in the canyons to conclude the weekend. In the morning, getting some shots of the beautiful sunrise over the valley, I had a surprise four-legged visitor. camera up here waiting for the sunrise and this is just such a an iconic Monument Valley Utah site right here 30 degrees Fahrenheit out here and the sun is just about to peak over the horizon it's gonna be an absolutely beautiful day of flying after filming the sunrise breakfast and the morning briefing miles and I were off to do some sightseeing <laughs> We hung around southern Utah, then picked up the Colorado River and followed it to Lake Powell with a full stop at Page. We flew two of the corridors over the Grand Canyon and had to get back to Monument Valley to make the afternoon survival talk, but we will come back through this area to make several stops before heading back to Texas. We were actually the first plane in our group to get back to Monument Valley, and we tied down the Cherokee, waited for everyone else, and attended the survival talk with Howard. Howard pulled out a ton of survival equipment and showed us the ins and outs of using various pieces of a survival kit, and he also covered lots of do's and don'ts. My personal favorite part of the lecture is where we all went outside, and he actually covered the usage of a signal mirror. You'd go, well, that works like this, but what if the plane is over there? People think there's no way because the sun's there. How's it? So people say, how do you do it? And my technique, I just tell people, trust the force, Luke. So you know that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So if the plane is low on the horizon there and the sun's low on the horizon there, we know the mirror is going to have to be really flat. So I'll see people in my classes and they'll go, you know, they'll get it going like this and they'll go, <laughs> it's not working. Um, so to trust the force Luke means you got a baseball hat on, probably got to turn it around and you get it on your hand and you know that this is going to have to get really, really, really flat in order for me to get this around to the other side. But you can you see that I'm getting it yeah. mm -hmm. all the way over there. And is there something on that building or something we can yeah. Right, The parallax is totally off. I'm shining this light right now up to something up there. Oh, oh. So it's got to be by your eye. Does that make sense? Yeah. Has to be by your eye. So this guy who's going like this, yeah, just <laughs> as long as you can see an airplane there between your fingers, they're going to see that. No. Okay. <laughs> so go practice this at home. You've got one of these in your kits. So let's go back in. Well, he actually said some things that I was like, huh, I need to remember that. Cause he like, like I don't have a signaling mirror in, in the survival kit we're carrying. Right. Uh, I have like five of those um, thermal blankets. Right. Which And, and he's like, they work, but right. So now I'm totally going to get some of those like blizzard right. things. What was super interesting was I thought was if you carry a handheld transceiver is write down the uh, high altitude center frequencies. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, say you can't reach anyone on the low altitude, there's usually always someone flying up high. 
and you'll probably be able to reach them if you have the right frequencies. Right, right. And then, of course, you know, they made another good point. He asked, you know, who monitors guard? Airliners monitor guard. So that was a good point. You can't beat these times. Awesome aviators, awesome Dude, people. The, the wealth of knowledge that we have here as far as instructors and just experienced pilots and people is just incredible. It's absolutely priceless. You cannot get this anywhere else but traveling with other pilots. That's the truck that's gonna take us out into the desert, so we're gonna pack up the camera gear here and go have some barbecue. Is that what we're eating? I don't know. We're gonna, don't know. Go, we're gonna go have some food in the desert. Maybe a few adult beverages. Maybe a few adult beverages. See ya. We're out in the boonies. I think I think we're in four-wheel drive. <laughs> I was not expecting that. The lodge drove us deeper into Navajo country to one of their secluded pavilions back in the canyons where they're going to prepare a meal for us. Being immersed in the setting surrounded by canyon walls and the desert truly sends you back in time and you can't help but reflect on and respect what all this land has seen. taken by the lodge out here to this pavilion where they're grilling steaks there's a there's a big fire pit and everything and everybody's just having a great time life's good i'm happy this is great sun just set right over there we're in this beautiful beautiful canyon these tall walls all around us i'm really glad we came on this and this is just the beginning of our trip general aviation can take you to some pretty magnificent places. Life's good. Take it in. We gathered around the bonfire for a bit and everyone talked about their flying adventures with their instructors today. Especially for being the first time that Jason and his crew has put on this Canyons of the Southwest course, I think it was a complete success. In part three, everyone departs Monument Valley and goes their separate ways, and Miles and I have a lot of ground left to cover before heading back to Texas. Our northernmost destination is the Boise National Forest, and on the way we'll be stopping in Salt Lake City to take a breather for a couple of days and drive over to Park City to tour one of my favorite distilleries, fittingly where High West Whiskey is made. If if you'd like to support Aviation 101, you can shop merch and gear at aviation101.com store, and to gain access to some exclusive content like behind the scenes, live streams, and giveaways, you can sign up at aviation101.com slash cockpit club. Links are down in the description. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss part three, and don't forget to go give Jason a subscribe at the finer points on YouTube, and check out his website to sign up for one of these awesome adventure courses. Until next time, I want you to stay happy, healthy, and current, and of course, stay proficient, and we'll see you in part three. Fly safe. Take me where your river flows. I want to drive on your open road like the wilderness where we are born singing.